Hi, it's uh, Rob from Lap. Look, we're continuing our chat here at LabCon, and with me I've got Luke from I've got Luke from Tank Lab. Uh, Luke's going to give us a bit more of insight into the actual game game world. So, Luke, uh, thanks for coming, no and uh, would you like to tell us a little bit more about what, what the actual not so much mechanics, but the world and the setting is like. Right. So the world itself is basically a abandoned colony. The humans were brought to this new world by an alien species that nobody remembers, and they were used as a workforce. And they had a much better life than they did back on Earth, which was rife with war and plagues. There was peace, it was brilliant. But then for some reason, unbeknownst to anybody else, the aliens just upped and left in a single night. And then they left this colony to kind of devolve. So all of the technology stopped working, everyone regressed to a kind of a, a dark age feudal system, and it just kind of like, they tried to pick themselves back up off from uh, sheer abandonment when, in this new setting. And then uh, a massive calamity happened, the mechanical horde appeared from the south, started sweeping across and killing everything, and the capital city that were, had separated itself off from the rest of the world, came to the rescue with the technology that still worked left and set off some doomsday weapon that made everything just blink out of existence. But it, in the wake of it, it left a battlefield scarred with craters and destroyed technology, but a lot of empty tanks and vehicles and resources that were still working. So the factions closest to this battleground, which was the Ravaran Empire and the Kingdoms of Gul'dan, are now in a bit of a uh, arms race to recapture all of this technology and whatnot, and to try and get into the, the capital city where all of this technology pretty much started from, and where, where basically the, the, the control of the entire continent could be wrestled from. And this war has been going on for the last two events, we have seen the players involving themselves directly into the field of war, but there's also other factions that are vying for influence with the factions that have the increased technology and the access to the tanks and the new fast response units. And there's this constant kind of evolving world that the players are influencing with every small decision. So yeah. there's been contested wars that people have gone to both sides and said I want support and the players have clearly taken one side so this war that's now not even making an influence on their battles is going for uh, into the realms of the people that were supported by the players just by handing them a few resources so they've affected the world without even having to fire a shot yeah and that's uh, I think that's a, that's a key point because when you look at the game there's Paratel Tank Lab is dealing with the larger world. Yes. Because I, I, when I, we've gone there, we shot things like uh, strategic maps and battle maps and looked at some of the resource planners. Exactly. Yeah. And if you look at some of the older videos we've got in Tank Lab, they're doing that. And then you've got the actual encounters themselves. So, really, what you're doing is you're letting the players build a world from, from a foundation. Exactly, yeah. Everything about the world can be influenced. There is nothing there that is set in stone that you can only do this. You can send letters to anyone in the world if you know their name and where to find them. That's the, the major thing that we've basically been trying to instigate is you control the world. You, yeah. ha you have the, the best technology in the world and you have the eye of every nation in the world at the moment. So what you say can often just be made to happen. So a lot of the factions and stuff like that that have been trying to get influence have that the players have actually given the resources or the military aid to are now doing better. The yeah. ones that have been ignored are doing worse off because of it. Mm. And there's also the, the idea that the playable factions at the moment are not the only ones that can be potentially played. Right. One of the, uh, the sides are actually very close to recruiting a new faction for their side, which would be playable characters. So, so, so even though we've got the law which has the two primary factions, we're, we're now going to see the emergence of additional factions or yes. additional groupings of players? Yes, if they're able to either recruit or annex or conquer another nation, they become playable. And that's always been since day one the rule of it. Basically, it, it's, it's a rush to wrestle contest of the, of the entire continent. Okay, so that's so what we're talking about then is, is a world war, but it's not laid down. It, it's everything that's for grabs. Yes, everything's up for grabs, but everything is done in within the confines of this gentleman's agreement that happened during the 
aftermath of the invasion of the Mechanical Horde because they realised that they were woefully underprepared and didn't have the manpower to be able to deal with it. So there is this kind of like um, accord. The, yeah. the Attraction Accord effectively states that you cannot execute people, you cannot... Uh, in. They have to be supplied with medical assistance if they need it. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's in order to make sure that whoever uh, vies control of the continent can still be able to deal with the next great calamity that comes their way. Mm. Because they are still abandoned in a continent that they don't know. So yeah, you've got plenty of world for room expansion there, I take exactly. it. Exactly. It, yeah. It's always up for expansion. New mini factions could pop up at any given opportunity. Yeah. Uh, again, this can be from player actions or even player diplomacy. Even a cult could go, could crop up as an, a direct influence of a player's um, letter writing to somebody. It, it can just happen. Okay. That, that's really fascinating. Look, that's give us another. We've got one view of it now to give us a, a really interesting counterpoint that I could make getting to see the shape now of Tank Club. Yes. Thank you very much for doing that. Yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's, a, that's another look there, Tank Lab. Uh, yeah, it's a really fascinating game. I hope you find it interesting. Uh, one last thing before I let Luke go is where can you find Tank Lab? Tank Lab can be found on Facebook under Tank Lab Live Action Roleplay. We also have a Wix site for all of the rules and whatnot. The event itself can be found outside of Leicester, and we're running the third event the weekend of the 8th to the 10th of July. Okay, so there you have it. That's how to find Tank Lab, and that's the background there. So, yeah, I look forward to seeing more Tank Lab in, this, in the field. Uh, hopefully catch you all there as well. <laughs>